Hi everyone, this is a sample lesson from a larger course. If you're interested in the full course, check out the link in the description below. In this lesson, we'll start comping our shot. Okay, so we're going to look at the basics of Nuke. That single frame should be rendered by now. We're going to bring that in and see how that looks. We're going to use that single frame that we've rendered to create a comp to just test that we've got the right things and adjust any settings that we might need and have a look. So we'll start off by bringing in the background. So here we are inside Nuke, so just fire up Nuke first of all. And obviously it's a brand new program. So let's just start off with the basics. To bring in, bring in any footage, we can press R on the keyboard in this section here in the node graph, and that will make a read node. You can also come in to the right to the top corner and you can see the little arrow there and you can click on read here okay so you can see it says the shortcut next to it is written down with an R which opens up this window here which is the browser go to your home directory and then you can find your downloaded footage so I've put it on the desktop uh, Maya VFX footage and then I'm going to go to the plate directory and pick the first frame so we don't want these TX files. So these TX files are basically the ones that Arnold has created for us. So we don't want those. We want these PNGs, which we've got. And I'm going to open that up. You can see that Nuke automatically knows that it's a sequence. So it doesn't show you individual files for this sequence. It's basically recognized that it's an image sequence and put this hash in where there's the number padding. So if you don't want that, you can turn on sequences and actually see the individual files. So you can see 600, 7, 601, etc. So it, it's quite handy seeing it in this sequence format so that it doesn't look like much. Uh, also, you can press this little arrow here to actually see the footage, and then you can actually see what you're getting. So you can scrub through this, and depending on how fast your computer is, you're gonna see what footage you're actually bringing in. Okay, so let's just go ahead and bring in, bring in the footage here. Click on open. Okay, and again, if we wanted to, we could have pressed R on the keyboard in this section here and brought that same window up. I'm just gonna close that up. And that would have made a read node too. So the first thing that throws people about Nuke is that when you load something in, it doesn't actually load up in the viewer. So you're wondering, you know, how do I actually see this? So it's pretty simple. You just connect it to the viewer, which is this node here. And the easiest way to do that is to click on your footage and press one on the keyboard. Just one on the keyboard. In fact, you can press any number on the keyboard, like two, three, four, five, six, whatever. And basically, these are different. This is different viewing channels that you can connect to your viewer. We'll have a look at that in a minute. The power of this is basically you can look at one node and then you can look at something all the way down the end of the tree and see the difference that you're making. So you can press one, two, for example, and um, compare the difference. All right. So anyway, so if we if you want, you can just click and drag this if you don't remember the shortcut and you can see it loads up in your viewer. So now that we've got that in the viewer, uh, you can press play. I'm just going to press rewind, press play. Okay, make sure you press rewind so it goes to 600 and you can see that the footage comes in wherever it was basically numbered. So it automatically sets the time range to 600 to 784 so that it basically knows where it comes in the timeline based on the numbers that you've got on your footage. Okay, so if we press S here in this area here, again, this is the node graph. So if we press S, we can see the project settings. And you can see that the first piece of footage that you bring in, Nuke has automatically set the frame range of the project to that frame range. So this is where you come to change that. Uh, also, we can set the frame rate and the size of the default things that you create. For example, if you create a black background, for example, or a noise pattern, it's gonna be created at this size, or if you create a mask, for example. So let's just change this to HD, which is the size of our footage. Okay, if you want to know how big the thing is that you're looking at, you can see it down here, it says HD 1080, and you can see that what size that is in pixels up here. So that's how big that footage is. And so if you press play, you should see the footage. Okay, this little green thing means that it's loading it up in the cache. So once it's loaded up in the cache, it's going to play in real time. I mean, mine's just playing in real time anyway because I've got a SSD drive and it's playing it pretty fast. These are PNG files, so they're pretty fast. But 
all footage will not be as fast as this. Okay, so we'll just go over the different areas of the interface. So again, we've got the viewer here. This is this viewer area here, this pane here. And you can zoom in and out using your mouse wheel here. You can also set that zoom in here. So you can set it to, for example, 100%, which is the actual size of it, which is control one on the keyboard. You can see the sh shortcut here or command one on the Mac. You can maximize this view by pressing spacebar. Okay. You can press F to fit. You can press H to actually fit. And you can see that here, look. H to fit the height. And then you've got F to fit as well. So you can also do 100% here as well and press play. And see it in full screen. Okay. And I'm going to press, uh, I was pressing play there. It's just off the keyboard. It's just off the screen there. Let me just make this smaller. That's better. Okay, so I press play here. So this this number here is the current frame, and you can scrub that current frame by clicking in this time slider here. You can just click and drag with your left mouse button and, and scrub your footage. Okay, and we can press spacebar to come out of that, and press F to fit it again. Okay, and make sure you press F inside here and not inside here, because the, the shortcuts here in this viewer is different. So let's demonstrate that by using the R key. Remember we used R here to create a read node, but over here, if we press R, we're basically going to see the red channel. So you can see here something changed. Red is what is showing. So you can see this black and white image, and that's how much red is in the scene. You can also press G for green and B for blue. Okay. If you want to come out of that mode, you just simply select it again. So B again will come out back into color. So it's really handy. I use that all the time. And the one that you use a lot is A, A for alpha. Okay, so you can see that this footage does not have an alpha. It's completely black. And in case you don't know what an alpha is, it's basically a way of defining the transparency of an image. Okay, so the white area is seen and the black area is not seen. And if you hover over any area here, you can see the information coming up on this side here, in this information panel here. And this is really useful because it tells you the value of the pixel that you're sampling. So you can see how much red, green and blue is in that sample. And that's really useful for seeing things like information passes. For example, when we created our AOVs for the position pass, we looked at how high something is so that the value to go from uh, zero to four, for example, in in our Miocene. And this is where you'd see what you can see in that pass. In the depth pass, for example, that we saw, it was completely white. But if you hover over it, you can see if there's any information in there. So you often see compositors sort of hovering over what looks like a solid color, but actually there's information in there. And they just have to remap it so they can just see that here. Then up here, you've got the exposure and gamma just the same as Maya. So you can take the gamma and lower it down, for example, and give yourself a bit of contrast. And you can take the exposure and turn it up to make it brighter. Just the same as the render view. And we've also got the lookup table, just the same as the render view. So this is basically set to sRGB. And this is the raw pixels here. Let me just turn this off. So this is the raw pixels, and it's basically applying an sRGB lookup curve to this footage and it's making it look like this, okay? Let's just keep the sRGB on. We can color correct this later, okay? Normally it recognizes what type of file format it is and then does a color correction based on the file format. Okay, so that's this little drop down here. Sometimes images have layers and you can see those in this section here. So you can see what layer you're looking at or you can look at the alpha as well. And basically if there's uh, some sort of EXR pass you can see it up you can see it in this section here sometimes you see this and it goes into 3d mode so you can come out of that by pressing 2d mode often people press tab by accident and they get into this view and then they're wondering what's going on this is actually a 3d view this is a, one of the best and most powerful things about nuke it's actually got some 3d capabilities and you can actually move around the view just like in maya but i'm just going to go and press tab again and it will come out of that 3d view so this is the section that you do all your work. This is the node graph. You take these nodes and you connect them together and then that will create your composite. And you can see the, the your work 
at different stages. So these nodes here, you can bring up the properties of these nodes by double clicking on them. Okay, you make sure you double click and they'll appear in this properties panel here. So this is the properties panel as it says up here. And you can see that it brings up the information for this node, which is the read one node. And you can see it's got some information there. You can see if we wanted to replace this footage, we could click on this little folder icon. Actually, not very clear that it's a folder icon, but if we click on it, we can bring up that browser again and replace that footage. And this also tells us how big the file is and then also the frame range of that footage that it's bringing in. Okay, It's also applying a lookup table. Everything that comes into Nuke is brought into a linear space, color space. So this is footage taken on a camera. So it's recognized that it's a PNG and the default for a PNG is it's going to apply a inverse sRGB lookup to make it linear. So it's basically applying this sRGB and then it's turning it into this image here. Okay, so that it looks correct. So this image will always look darker because it's the linear image. And then when you apply the lookup curve, it will look correct. In this case, it's not it's not particularly correct because what we've done is we've taken this footage in a special color space in a log sort of color, almost a log color space, which is basically giving more information to the bright areas just so that we get a better quality footage so it doesn't get blown out in these bright areas. So actually this 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 linear image look, probably looks more correct than the sRGB, but we'll correct that later in, in just a second. So I'm just going to turn the sRGB back on. Everything would be seen through that lookup table anyway. You can get rid of these things by clicking on the little X here and clean out your workspace and you can bring it back by double clicking here. And you can close up this individual node here by clicking on this little icon here. Whatever is open in here, you'll see a gizmo for it in the view. So if you close that up, the gizmo will disappear in the view. We'll see that a bit later. So those are just some basics to get us started. We're just going to save the comp as it is so far. So I'm just going to go to File, Save Comp As, and then save this somewhere where you'll remember where it is. So I'm going to put this inside my Maya VFX folder, and I'm just going to create a new folder. Just call that Nuke. Okay, and then I'm just going to call this ship comp, and I'm going to add a V01. We're going to add this V01 so that we can use a nice little feature in Nuke, which is basically save a new comp version, and that will basically increment that for us when we want to. These Nuke files are really quite small, so you should save different versions really and save often. So in this lesson, we had a look at the basics of Nuke by bringing in our background footage.